data science is getting a lot of attention. It's been called by Harvard Business Review the sexiest job of the 21st century. And I sort of asked them, have you met a data scientist? They wouldn't have said that. If they, no, but anyway, uh, it's, um, and, and data scientists are often referred to as unicorns because the skills required, if you had to have them all in one person, are very rare to find. You obviously need that technical ability to, to model. You need the detail-oriented uh, to get the data right. And then you need the presentation skills to persuade. The uh, uh, talk this morning mentioned that the quality, the excellence of your results is a product of the quality and the acceptance. And I very much agree with that. Early in Elder Research's existence, we, well, we've always had tremendous success with the quality and the completion of our work, but only about two-thirds of our projects were actually used by our clients. It, there's some sort of barrier with uh, it being too different, it being too scary, it being not quite understood. Well, we've worked really hard to get that acceptance part with better, uh, easier-to-use tools being delivered as part of, instead of just, here's the equation, here's a tool that makes it happen. Um, so the, um, the, it actually gets used and actually uh, affects the bottom line. But the skills needed to make that uh, understandable and relevant to the users are very different from the quantitative skills needed to analyze the data and figure out the problem. And of course the uh, wonderful computer and attention skills needed to get the data uh, lined up and correct. So. It's best to have a team where different people have different specialties and they work carefully together. And then you also have that help from observing each other's biases and correcting for things. Uh, so uh, the team approach is really the best and it's a, it's a very collaborative amongst the data scientists and between them and the client. We always learn things from our clients and they hopefully always learn from us. Data science and predictive analytics and data mining kind of all synonymous with one another. Learning from data. If you have uh, deductive knowledge is where you have a theory and it applies to specific cases. Data mining, predictive analytics is inductive. You have specific cases and from that you learn the general principles or the theory that will apply to the future. So it's a fascinating field where you're really building something that will help you have a crystal ball or a palantir like the hobbits to look into the future. Uh, and, uh, and, and I find it uh, fascinating. The wonderful thing about working in consulting in data mining is you get to learn about so many different fields and you learn some tricks and techniques and vocabulary and problems and that knowledge is transferable to other completely different organizations. I did a lot in uh, medical work and then that turns out to be of course very translatable to maintenance of machinery, complex machinery like satellites or tanks or things like that. Um, anyway, there's some wonderful parallels you can see. But what we are is experts in data analysis. And people writing papers are not typically experts in data analysis. They're experts in their field, but they're trying to follow some rote formula in the analysis part. You team those two expertises together, and you get tremendous results. I want to show, I, I, can't, I can't help but show uh, one pair of slides, because it, com it conveys a secret weapon that we use. That, happy to share. I've written a book on it, so it's already out there. Anyway, uh, here is a contest, a bake-off, if you will, between five different methods on six different problems. And the, f the best method for the problem, the one that did best on new data, is the one at the bottom. and has the lowest relative error. These are on relative scales to expand their differences rather than on absolute scale. So logistic regression, this purple one, one on the diabetes problem, predicting which Pima Indian in Arizona has diabetes versus which one doesn't. Uh, but it did the worst on the fake investment problem that's been set up in the literature. Three of these problems are real and three are fake, but there's, there's six of the most popular ones. Hundreds of papers have been written using these data points, and so it provides a great level of comparison, even though this is all uh, a new comparison. Um, and you can see that... Um, uh, neural nets come out ahead. The red one does poorly on the first problem, but very well on the subsequent problems. Uh, and if you were a proponent of different techniques, it turns out that every technique comes in first or second at least twice. And so uh, every dog has its day. Uh, anyway, but the, the good news is that, uh, well, the bad news is there's no single best technique, although neural nets, uh, when properly done, are, are, are powerful and definitely one of the ones I would include in my toolkit. 
but there's a better way than trying to figure out what are the characteristics of the problem and what's my best algorithm. And that better way is to simply combine those competing methods together. Now, I've made this more complex than I need to. There's four different ways of combining. But take, take for instance, the orange one. That's just averaging together. So you build these five separate models, which it doesn't, it's really not five times as much work, because all the work is getting the data ready. It's only a little bit more work. But you can let your boss think it's five times as much work. That's good. Um, and anyway, then you put the answers together by averaging them, by voting, by doing other more fancy things, um, and look at the results. The, the, the combined, the committee, is now as good as the best individual model, even though you didn't really know ahead of time which one was going to be the best. And there's a lot less variation in the results. So it's a wonderful, it's, it's not guaranteed, but it's a, it's a wonderful way to get extra performance. And uh, it makes a lot of sense if you kind of think of it as a board of directors of some models that all have specialized ways of looking at the world, put them together, they have to compromise, and the risk is reduced.